Hey loves and welcome back to my channel. It has been a minute so I'm glad to be back. This time I am going to be showing you a frontal with um, a sew-in and this is going to be on a short haircut. So yes we are not doing 22 inches more like four inches maybe. But anyway I'm going to go ahead and get started and the technique that I'll be using on her is going to be um, somewhat similar to the previous one but different in a few ways. One is I'm going to Sew her back traditionally the way most frontals are done but um, I'm going to actually do the prep for her frontal a little bit different especially because her hairline recedes so of course usually with a frontal when you do the cornrows going back you're able to anchor the braid in her case I wouldn't be able to and then in that back area as I just showed you um, I did not braid the cornrows all the way down I came to about her occipital bone and I'll explain that later on as to why I did that. But I'm going to go ahead and use my spray freeze and freeze this hair up. I want to make it very stiff and I want it to stay put. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and add my liquid latex that I usually use. And I'm going to mold that. So as soon as I get this firmed with the blow dryer, then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add that. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to create a very, very flat surface, as you can see here, for my sewing. And just because the braids don't come that far down does not mean that I cannot sew onto that hair. So right now, I'm measuring her frontal, <clears throat> just checking exactly where I want to put it. And as I said, I won't be able to braid the, or excuse me, stitch the frontal down on the sides. Um, to secure it because the braids start so far back so I'm gonna go ahead and add an elastic band this is gonna help to keep the frontal in place it's also going to give it a more tighter hug to her head so that uh, the flaps on the sides don't come up as easily and it's gonna make it a lot less maintenance for her if you've seen the other video which I'll link I guess in the description bar that I did on her I did half of a frontal so I cut about a third off of the frontal and I used a cap that already had an elastic band so then she didn't have to do any gluing or um, any gelling to keep her frontal down uh, but because I'm using the frontal from ear to ear I don't have the pleasure of doing that so this is the reason I'm adding the elastic band. So now the band has already been added and I've also added some netting as you can see here and that is to cover the braided area that I will be stitching and also the lower area where there isn't any braids. So that you do after you've added your band. So I'm adding the morning glory as some people call it or the liquid cap now and once I get that I'm not going to blow dry that I'm going to leave it a little bit tacky. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the frontal. I'm laying her hairline down, the fine hairs that are around there, with the got to be in the clear black tube. And that's just so that that doesn't get into the way when I go to apply her frontal. So in adding her frontal, I'm going to position it exactly where I need it to be. Remember the elastic band is already attached and so is the netting. It is the elastic band first and then the netting is over the elastic band. So make certain that if you do try this method that you do it in that order. Here I'm just stitching the net down and as you can see it is layered over the elastic band. And then I'm going to go ahead and install the frontal by adding glue. So I am using Ghost Bond at first. And then in this tube right here, this is bolt hold. And I'm using that as well. And I'm also smearing or thinning out the bolt hold to get a flatter surface. Surface, excuse me. So I use a hand fan and then my blow dryer. I just think it, I don't know, I think it dries it better. Could just be me, but that's how I feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the lace down. 
And once I get it secured, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the lace off. So I'm showing you her right side and then I did her left side off camera. Now removing her lace, here's a slow-mo of how the sides turned out. So with the 27 piece here, I'm gonna go ahead and use that for the lower shaved half. Um, I'm gonna use that right up into her occipital bone, probably right to or maybe a little bit above the um, elastic band. It just depends on how it falls. I'm razoring it as I go because I like to be able to see the hairline and know where I want to start and stop. And you can do the haircut all at once if you choose to. It is a little time more time consuming to do it this way, but it's more precise. So that's why I choose to do that. So yeah, I am now reaching the area of where her elastic band is. And once I get to this area, then I will switch out and I will use tracks for the remainder because tracks are just a lot more fuller. So this is where I'm going to stop. I'm going to go in and razor this area as well. And I'm um, being certain to razor it kind of close. I want this to lay flat um, most of the time. Now this is optional. If you have a client that prefers it to be a little bit more full or they like to be able to curl it further down, then of course, by all means, leave more hair back there. More length, I should say. Empire is the brand of hair that she brought. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the remainder. I'm gonna put these wefts pretty close because I want it to be full. Um, and I want it to be able to balance out the frontal. This frontal that I have is a pretty dense frontal, which is good. Sometimes that's very hard to find, especially if you buy a cheaper frontal. Usually you can't do too many short hairstyles without it looking thin. And this is what it looks like. So I'm still continuing to go into a U pattern. And once I feel like it is close enough, then I'll go back and forth as you can see here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mold her with some foam. And I'm gonna wet it just a little bit with my water bottle because I don't wanna overly saturate the hair. She has to go under the dryer and I don't want her under there forever. Also, I don't want to disturb the morning glory that I have in the back. And I'm gonna go ahead and start razoring her cut now. And it's good for you to go ahead and put your part in now as to where you want it to be as opposed to later. And then you can always tweeze it and define it once it's dry. Now this is what it looks like just razor. And for some this might be good enough. But me, I have to go in and take a little bit more length off. So I'm going to go in and use my shears. I'm a lot more comfortable with my shears when it comes to being more precise. But I do like razoring because I feel like it gives the ends a nice natural fall and it doesn't look so thick and choppy. So now I'm gonna put some more foam and a little bit of water on the remainder of the hair. And again, I'm not trying to overly saturate the hair. I just want the foam to glide smoothly as I mold it. And I wanna make certain I get those areas that usually would buckle like above the ear and around the hairline or neckline to lay. I have just a little bit of brown gel on my comb and you can use any brown gel that doesn't flake. And I'm also gonna put it right here above the ear because again, I don't want it to buckle and this will keep it very stiff and it'll give it a more natural effect. Then I'm gonna put my wrap cap on and I'm gonna get her under the dryer until she dries. So, so you know, that time-wise that varies. Now that she's completely dry, I'm cleaning up her sides with my clipper. And you want to get this as precise because this is definitely what is going to give it that more natural look. And as you can see, it's very full in the top. I'm going to go ahead and tweeze this part for a more natural look. I'm going to add a little bit of product before styling. And then the rest is history, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and let you watch the remaining of the video. If you have any comments or any questions, please make certain that you put it down below. I love to hear from you guys. If there's anything else that you would like to see um, that I could do, please also put that. And don't forget to subscribe. If you have not subscribed already, love, make certain that you do. Make certain that you select that notification button so that you know every time I upload a video. 
And this is the finished look, guys. What do y'all think? I loved it. She loved it. Here is a 360 turn. And this is a complete sew-in with frontal. So, you don't have to be limited to just closures or if someone has hair challenges. There's always a way. Like my mom said, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So, I don't know, for cat lovers, you might not like that, so I'll take that back. But, yeah, there's definitely other methods. And you just have to, <clears throat> excuse me, go into your trick bag and do what you can to satisfy your customer. So, this is it. I am putting a little bit of holding spray on it just to kind of keep it in place. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. There will be much more to come. You just make certain that you subscribe and you keep watching. And until next time, bye loves.